mental health is becoming more of a common word, maybe better understood. Obviously, it is still not well understood, and and still we're not we haven't arrived. What you say? We are not. You know, there's not a hundred percent adoption. We're still, you know, losing soil. And, but there's been a lot of changes. The agricultural industry is beginning to have soil health as a, uh, a major initiative. The root crop areas, okay, are providing leadership for that. And so crops like potatoes and sugar beets and carrots, okay, uh, uh, started this. But it's now expanding uh, across the board and has become a, a fairly major uh, topic of consideration. Uh, everything that we eat has to be grown somewhere and the soil um, where it is grown determines the quality of the produce, what kind of vitamins and nutrients are contained within the food that we eat. Uh, so this really helps benefit society um, by improving health overall. With the population of the world increasing at the rate it is, we lose something like three acres a minute of farm ground to um, construction and industrialization and so we're losing farm ground and we're gaining people that need to be fed so the more the more crops we can produce on the ground that we have is hugely important it makes a major difference and that is really one of the biggest challenges facing our world today is being able to feed the population we have with the land that we have sustainability is very important in part because our agriculture is very intensive compared to the past. We are, have new varieties that are high yielding, that they are demanding a lot from that soil. And in order to maintain those high yields, we need to have high quality soils, we need to have high nutrients, we need to have high organic matter. The organic matter provides a lot of things. One is aeration, water, re you know, water retention, it's like a sponge, it holds the water, but at the same time, when it's flooded, it'll drain better. So it, it, it provides many, many benefits, and it holds on to a lot of soil nutrients that attach to carbon. So because of this, because of these topics, because of these reasons, it is here to stay. It's not going to disappear. The bottom line really is uh, uh, for, for the farmers, yield and quality, okay? And we've definitely seen with some of our compost experiments and with other personal experiences which are not in a research vein, uh, uh, good yields and, and healthy crops. And so uh, that's what the two things that most people use compost for. But I think compost has made two very, very different objectives. One is short term. Okay, for making sure the farm is profitable for this year and next year. And the other is what compost uh, hopefully uh, can do for uh, enhancing and maintaining uh, soil quality over the long period of time. You know, we talk about what happened in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s about using chemicals um, to outsmart Mother Nature or, or at that time we thought we were doing good with just growing with N, P, and K. Um, it's important to me um, for the next generation to understand soil quality. And uh, kind of like what great grandpa used to do, you know, he really focused in on soil quality, um, how to build the soil, how to build organic matter, how to build food with, with quality minerals for our, our body to consume them. Um, it's, it's, that all in together is something that I think the next generation is going to take this to another, to another level. And I think it's good composters and people and, and good farmers of the land that really pay attention to what my soil quality is for the next generation, not um, just for tomorrow. It's not a passing fad. It, it is here to stay and it is here to increase because uh, carbon, the soil carbon in the United States has about decreased by half compared to when it was when they first started um, farming. So, and if you look at like areas where there's muck soil, the level has decreased by three feet or some places even more. The soil, because of tillage and the carbon, the organic matter, becomes CO2, becomes air. 
So it literally, the soil goes up in the air, to never to be recuperated again. Well, I believe that uh, compost is a very, the use of compost is a very good way to um, add organic matter back to the soil, add nutrients back to the soil, and add microorganisms back to, to the soil. I feel like Dairy Dew um, has, it's a unique product that when applied to various different soil types uh, really can enhance the, the um, production of those fields. So I've seen some really poor um, degraded sandy soils that were built up with Dairy Dew over the years and um, went from almost producing nothing to being very productive soils. I advise a, a farmer that wants to do something about soil health, I strongly advise them to do a number of different things. And the first thing is to go to their very good records, okay, and, and look at their yields and look at their soil chemistry and physical tests for the past few years. And then I would recommend after discussing this that you uh, take soil samples. <clears throat> and sometimes there's some surprises uh, that come back, but usually the soil is degraded, okay? And that's where it becomes difficult, because now uh, what, what do you do, okay, in relation to that? And compost can usually be one component of the, uh, of the what will be recommended or the solution. Uh, I believe the long-term effects of using Dairy Dew um, and any of our composts are really um, is to improve the microbiological interaction with soil, um, create better um, fertility and retention of nutrients in the soil. Um, and these have long-term effects. You know, we've lost half of the carbon in our topsoil in the United States over the past 50 years, and we're really seeing the benefits of adding that back into our fields um, and getting them back, restoring the soil back to what it used to be.